Mark, good to be back here at Dicker Precision. Uh, just a couple of months ago, you installed this brand new Spinner U620 from White House, didn't you? Uh, why the move into five axis? Uh, I've been thinking about five axis for a couple of years now and um, decided to take the plunge early this year. And um, from recommendations from White House, obviously looked at the usual suspects, um, uh, put a lot of faith in White House for the jobs we were looking at doing. Uh, they proved out the, the job on the machine. Um, I then since have reprogrammed it on our own software because um, we're going to have to use our own software on the machine. Um, but I think it's been a good investment. That, that particular, one of the jobs that you took uh, this machine for was you were struggling to make any money making it, weren't you? Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, because it's uh, made out of solid. Um, there were two roughing ops and then you had three finishing ops on top of that. Um, by moving it onto the spinner, we're doing it in two ops now. And all the sizes coming out correct. It's quite a tight tolerance job as well. What, what sort of tolerances are they that you were, tr you were trying to keep on, the, uh, on that part? Uh, there's a couple on there of about 20 microns, uh, which need to be right. Uh, we were struggling on the machines we had originally to hit them tolerances. I know Geo's talking to Brandon, but just uh, uh, more about technical stuff. But the machine in itself, you've gone for this machine. It's got double door, uh, the 620. You've got quite a big table. What, was this a perfect machine for you when it comes to the size and what it what it offered? The size of work we're looking at putting on there. Obviously, you can put half a ton on the table, and we're doing stainless parts on it pretty much dominant at the moment um, and it's handling in that no trouble at all because it's got quite a high high roof on this as well what, what, what's that about um, it's got a high roof on there because of um, it's got um, air mist distraction on it um, because of the through coolant uh, spraying coolant everywhere and the, and the mist you need that facility on the on the machine so you, are you using you using three through spindle high pressure coolant on the machine yes we are especially for u drills and there's been a few jobs we were using 25d uh, four mil drills through coolant, so you've got to have it. When you were trying to select the machine as well, you were thinking about a horizontal machining centre as opposed to the vertical. Why did the vertical five axis win? Um, it's, it's a similar technology to what we've got. We're used to VMCs, uh, and you know, horizontals are great for maybe bigger batch quantities, but we're typically on the smaller batch size. So and, and you went for the four plus one as opposed to the full five axis. Is there a reason for that? Yes, um, down to cost and down to the, the type of work we do. Um, four plus one is will cover pretty much 90% of the stuff you'd ever need to do on a five axis machine. And when we talk about savings and how much quicker you're making uh, components on here, the job that we actually spoke about, how much faster is it going through production now compared to how you were doing it before when you couldn't make money on it? Uh, I think we're saving probably three hours per component. Um, you're saving in setup time because there's less ops. Uh, and when, because they're a generic sort of a number of parts, the tooling is the same for each part. So set up from one size to another is very quick. And, and does that mean that you're going to get the repeat business for this then? Because I, I believe you were telling me earlier that some of the work had come back from the Far East and, and you needed to be competitive to keep it here. Uh, yes, um, we are competitive now. We are competing against the Far East on certain jobs and I, it looks like that trend is going to continue. And do you leave this running, Mark? Is it, is it a machine that you can press a button and walk away? Because there's quite a lot of metal removal on some of those parts, sort of hour, hour and a half cycle time. There's a lot of metal removal, um, but we've got it, the program pretty much sorted now, which it can be left, load apart, leave it for two hours, operator can go and run another machine, come back and change over. So, What, what about the precision that you're getting from the machine as well, when you look at the, because you're doing some circular interpolation, also, instead of uh, tapping holes, you were, you're using thread milling. There are quite a, a few changes in the process, aren't they, compared to how you were doing things? Yeah. Um, we've gone to thread milling not from tapping purely because the billets are not cheap. If you break a tap in a billet, it's a pain to get out. Thread mill goes, blow the hole out, put a new thread mill in. It's, a, it's, it's you know, more cost effective doing it that way. And the circular interpolation as well, is that, is that maintaining tolerance? Circuit interpolation on that machine is, is fantastic. Um, you've got glass cows on all axis, so it's super accurate. And when you were machining those uh, or doing those balls before, you were on the extremities of the plus and minuses, weren't you? But you're now right bang in the centre of, uh, of the required tolerance. Uh, absolutely, yeah. It's coming out as it should do. Uh, customers are extremely happy with what we're doing. Um, because we're doing away with boring bars and we're generating everything, all the blends in all the corners are coming out perfect.
the options that you have with the machine, I know as standard you've got the double door, that makes it nice and easy to get in and set, doesn't it? Uh, it gives you a lot of access, um, especially if you're putting a big four jaw chuck up as we do. Um, it's very handy to have that access. And the probing? Probing's, um, it's fantastic. It's, it's so easy. Yeah, put a tool in, give it a length, push a button and it sets it all for you. And, and the actual uh, tool changer on this machine, how many tools do you get with it? Uh, we've got 36 on this one. Um, if I was to buy another one, I'd probably go a bit higher. Um, but it's plenty for with the work we're doing at the moment. German built quality, is that a, a fair assumption? I would say so, yes. Supported by a, a, an equally as good quality machine tool manual or machine tool distributor in the UK, White House Machine Tools. Yeah, we put a lot of um, faith in White House with this machine. Um, obviously, we bought the Belia off of them, and the support has uh, been fantastic. And the same has been true for this machine. You had a bit of a change around in here to fit this machine in, didn't you? Uh, we've moved a little bit. Um, we're trying to keep it all neat and tidy as we can. But uh, so we're gradually filling the building up. I often wonder whether you'll go back to three axis or always stick to five. Uh, I think we're going to go five all the way, yeah. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you very much, Paul.